in this video, I'm going to be talking about Delta Life Tables and why I'm not a big fan of it. First, what is Delta Life Tables? Delta Life Tables is a new feature in Databricks that basically uh, is used to create a data pipeline that processes data from uh, a raw source to uh, a, a clean data to a finished uh, product. We normally have a Medellin architecture in Delta Lake where you take data from bronze, silver, gold. And Delta Life Tables intention is to help make it a lot efficient to go from your raw data to a, a cleaned or transformed to a processed data. This is the overall general syntax. I'm not going to go into the details of this. However, I'm going to just go right into why I'm not a big fan of it. First, the syntax. As you can see here, this is the syntax of Delta Life Table. It is not intuitive, at least coming from someone that writes PySpark. Um, first, you could see we are using functions to define um, tables. Uh, when we are reading the data from a, a file. And we're also reading from a function as well. As you can see here, click stream raw. Normally, we are used to reading from a file or reading from a data frame or table or file path. So it's a bit conflicting from what we are used to. That's one reason. And then you have all this at Delta table, which uh, is a bit um, not intuitive. Should we always put it on top of the functions? It's not really clear. I think Databricks could do a lot better job to make it the syntax very intuitive and more you know, publish for a, a product. Secondly, does not integrate with the existing ETL tools. As you can see here, Delta Life Tables, the goal from Databricks point of view was to actually build a competing product with the ETL tools that we have in the market like Data Factory, Airflow, Fivetran, Therefore, they do not support that integration. For example, normally in the production pipelines, uh, currently triggering notebooks like this from my data factory pipeline. But in this case, I really have to trigger this notebook from a Delta Life table workflow, as you can see here. I have to create this workflow, create a job for it to run. So I get it. Databricks is trying to keep you within their platform. However, it's not really that friendly for, for us, for someone that's already in the real world, they are using a lot of uh, mainstream ETL tools. Even if you adopt something new like Delta Life Tables, at some point, you still want to integrate it. You still want to do some part in your ETL and do some part in, in Delta Life Tables uh, workflow. Now, the other point is you can't run notebooks in debug mode. As you can see here, I try to run this code, piece of code, to actually see what I'm doing. Imagine you have you are writing your code and you want to uh, do a lot of uh, unit testing. 
you can't really do it because Delta Life Tables doesn't allow you to run this notebook in uh, the park mode. It needs a special cluster. It needs to be run in, through this workflow mode. And that's always a challenge because with this workflow mode, I have to wait to see that it, where it, the error message that I get before it can actually uh, run, before I can actually debug it. Or I have to create some of this code in a different notebook and copy and paste into, to, into this to make sure it runs. So it's just a challenge to me to uh, make this work in a production mode. Fourthly, in most production scenarios, we normally store our data in different containers, like in, in data lake storage containers. So we have a bronze silver gold zones, which map to different storage containers in our Azure data lake. However, with Delta Life Tables, because it's doing <coughs> all the work for you, it tends to create all these tables within one storage container, which is might not be what you want to do. So that's a little bit of a limitation. It doesn't give you flexibility. And I, you know, I, I don't see people using that because this is a big thing that we want to separate. Uh, all the bronze tables should be stored in one storage container, uh, not storing everything in, under one container. Then the fifth and the final disadvantage is that there's no real advantage of using this for processing over the conventional means when whenever we are dealing with incremental load. As a, for example, I, I used to think that Delta Life Table will make it easy for me if I need to do an offset logic. I don't even have to worry about it. When I reference this table, it's going to do an offset. It's not going to do overwrite. However, by default, it does an overwrite uh, from your you know, silver to your gold uh, tables, which is inefficient. For you to do the offset, there is a different syntax for that that you need to write, which I think is what's the advantage. If I have to write a different syntax, do a merge or similar version of a merge in, in Delta Life table, I might as well just do it in PySpark. So these are some of the disadvantages that I saw with Delta Life tables. I was really trying to use it in incorporating into some of my real world production pipelines. However, just looking at this, I'm very discouraged. I don't think I'm gonna go any further to experiment on this. Let me know what you think in the comments. I, I think they probably will have more updates coming on this. However, it's a it's a no no for me. Um, the biggest issue is <coughs> the inability to 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 define the containers that I I want to start the data sessing, and not inability to run this code by itself or in debug mode. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. Let me know what you think. Bye.